to my weary heart Strength in my broken parts Lead me to your open arms Word of truth Illuminate all these lies The enemy speaks inside And freedom my will rise yeah, Cause you call me out From the grave So I can live Like I've been changed There is a new song In my soul And it begins When I breathe in Your word of life Spirit of God, take me to a deeper place. Take me out of what is safe. I will not be afraid. Spirit of God, fill me with joy again. Spring me up from within. It cannot be contained. Cause you call me out from the grave. So I can live like I've been changed. There is a new song in my soul And it begins when I breathe in Your word of love you out and saved you. Cause you called me out from the grave so I can live like I've been changed. There is a new song in my soul and it begins when I breathe in your word of saving you today. Amen. Holy water. I'm so glad that we can get on down on our knees and we can ask him to help us and come into our heart and all things. again God I'm begging please again I need you oh I need you walking down this desert road water for my thirsty soul I need you oh I need you your forgiveness it's like sweet, sweet honey on my lips Like the sound of a symphony to my ears Like holy water on my skin Slave to sin, I want to know about being born again. I need you. Oh God, I need you. So take me to the riverside, take me on to baptize. I need you. Oh God, I need you. Do you need him today? Sing it out. Your forgiveness. It's like sweet, sweet honey on my lips Like the sound of a symphony to my ears Like holy water on my skin On my I don't want abuse, 
is your grace God I need it every day it's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change I don't want to abuse your grace God I need it every day it's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change I don't want to abuse your grace God I need it every day it's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change one more time I don't want to abuse your grace God I need it every day it's the only thing that ever really makes me want to change your forgiveness it's like sweet, sweet honey on my lips Like the sound of a symphony to my ears It's like holy water, your forgiveness It's like sweet, sweet honey on my lips Like the sound of a symphony to my ears it's like holy water on my skin. It's like holy water on my skin. Oh, it's like holy water. You may be seated. All right. Good morning, everybody. We doing good? Amen, amen. You know, we talk about a beautiful day out. It has just been incredible the last few days. God gives us rain for a reason, all right? And uh, sometimes when he gives us eight, nine days of it, I, no, <laughs> we can thank God through everything, but I love this weather. I love this sun. God is just so good. You know, as far as announcements go, we don't have much. Um, I do have one. Don't forget, we've got Little's Church, and I'll dismiss. And I owe Don and Tamara a huge apology. Last weekend, I forgot to dismiss, but y'all knew what to do anyway. See, you don't even need me. So, <laughs> But no, uh, we'll dismiss after uh, our last song that we'll, uh, we'll, say, uh, we'll sing. Um, but what I wanted to say today was Franklin Graham put out yesterday, and you all should know who Franklin Graham is, Billy Graham's son. And um, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to know that our country needs our prayers. Now more than ever, we are in the midst of a lot of unrest for a lot of different reasons. And um, I just wanted to take this time to, to, if you would, please, this week and every day, and especially today when we ask God's blessing over the offering, if you would just really pray for our country because we need it. And um, we need to pray for our leadership, uh, whether it's local or national. They need our prayers. They are in tough positions. And uh, there's a lot of hatred and a lot of things going on out there. And we need to lift our president up. I'll just say it. We need to lift him up instead of throwing stones, okay? So no such thing as a perfect person, right? Just Jesus, okay? We can't get Jesus for president, just saying, all right? So we just got to lift them all up. Uh, as the ushers come, uh, I'll go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, we just come together and we just thank you so much. Lord, it's truly an honor and a privilege to be here today. I thank you for this amazing weather. I thank you for the country that we live in. Lord, I thank you so much that we can gather together live in person, Lord, or we can do it through the internet. We're just so blessed, Father, that we can still gather together. I just ask that you bless this offering, Father. May everything we do glorify you. We lift up our leadership, Lord, local, national. We just lift them up to you. Father, this unrest that America is experiencing right now, I just ask that your sovereign hand be upon it, God, because you are still on the throne. Father, in faith, we're going to thank you for the good things. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. After you give your tithes and offerings, please feel free to stand and worship with us.
destined to die, pulled out for all mankind. God's only Son, perfect and spotless one. He never sinned, but suffered as if he did. All authority, every victory is yours. Praise the day, Forever, 
awesome and great is your name. for the things that you've given us each and every day, Lord Jesus, that we know where our good comes from. Everything good and glorious comes from you and above. And Lord Jesus, just thank you for everything. Be with Buddy as he brings us the message today that we will apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, I'm not going to forget. If you have a little and they want to go to church, now's that time. They're already in church, I know, but <laughs> they have their own little special church. We're so blessed to have that. You know, kids are just so amazing, aren't they? I, I've had the honor and privilege of being a father to two pretty good kids, and I'm, I'm blessed to be their dad, and uh, sometimes they claim me every once in a while. But uh, kids say some of the funniest things. I'll never forget, reminds me of a story of this little... A little guy named Johnny. We'll just call him Johnny. Johnny really loved his Sunday school class. And the teacher just loved to teach. On this one particular day, little Johnny learned where Eve came from. And the teacher did a great job, said, you know, God put Adam in a deep sleep. He took a rib out of his side and he created Eve. And he was just blown away by it. He ran out after uh, church was over, and he told his mom, I know where women come from. I know where Eve came from. I understand it now. Well, about three days later, he wasn't feeling too good, and he was laying curled up in the living room in a ball and was just hurting, holding his side. And his mom said, what's wrong? He said, Mom, I think I'm getting a wife. <laughs> not bad, not bad. There you go. Not bad. Oh, I tell you what, you know, I, I'm going to be completely real and completely honest with you. I feel so underqualified to preach today's message. In our sermon series, Knowing God and Knowing Him Better, today we're talking about God's holiness. And it blew me away preparing this message together uh, for us today. And um, God is amazing, is He not? Amen. And, and we have been talking about His omniscience. We've been, we've been talking about His omnipotence. We've talked about his omnipresence. But his holiness is something that I don't think we talk about enough. God is holy, and he expects his people to be holy as well. We're going to get into all that in just a second, but holy is a word that we oftentimes abuse. Let's just be honest. The word holy has a whole meaning that we just kind of let go of the grasp of what that should mean, not only as a person, but especially as a Christian. God has called his people to be holy because God himself is holy. Let me give you a couple quotes on God's holiness. Henry Thiessen said this, God is holy means that he is absolutely separate from and exalted above all his creations and creation. And he is entirely separate from all moral evil and sin. Think about that for just a moment. We have God is holy. He is separate from anything and everything that is evil or sinful. Yet loves you and I so much that he sent his son to die on the cross for us. Amen? You see, God just didn't say, I am holy. You are you. Stay away from me. God invites us in to be part of his family. Let me give you another quote. God's holiness, this is from Harold Wil Wilmington, said God's holiness is a single perfection that would perhaps come closer to describing the eternal creator than any characteristic he possesses. It is the union of all attributes as pure white light is the union of all the colored rays of the spectrum. Now these are some visual images that I want you to kind of put in the back of your mind. But it's so true. God is so holy, there is no darkness in him. There is nothing but pure white light, pure amazingness of who God is and his holiness. Now, the root word for holy comes from the Hebrew word gadosh. Gadosh. This means set apart, sacred, sanctified. Our God is set apart, 
holy. He's sanctified. He's separate from us. But again, he loves us so much that he put us in his presence. God's holiness also includes two of his essential qualities. Absolute transcendence. I know it's a big word, but we don't think about it too often. And infinite purity. Now, that infinite purity, that's easy. We know God is completely pure, infinitely, right? But this word transcendence, it's a big word, but it's awesome. It says he is out of bounds, if you will, right? He is out of limits. We cannot put a limit on God. We cannot put a limit on his holiness. Yet, brings it together for you and I, and I love it so much. Now, the word holy appears in the Bible over 600 times. The word holy. The derivatives of that word with holy appear 700 times throughout the Bible. Holiness, sanctify, and sanctification. See, these are words that we've heard. Preachers have preached on them, and, and we just set them aside. We know God's holy. Yeah, okay, what does that mean to me? That's what we're going to be talking about today. The most, the biggest, the amazing attribute that God is, is holy. Let's not brush it off or sweep it under the rug. Let's think about this this week as we go on when we leave here today. And, and it should blow us away that here is this holy God that allows us to come to him. He allows us to come to him in our prayer life. Here's the best one. Are you ready for this? As Christians, when we die, we get to go be with him. Does that not blow you away? I, I mean, when we accept Christ as our savior, we get to spend eternity. And that's forever, ever, 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 ever. I could keep going. <laughs> it's a long time. We get to spend it with him in his presence. So today we're going to talk about God's holiness. You should know that by now because I've said it a whole lot. But I always like to give a sermon in a sentence, and it's very easy. If you've ever listened to contemporary Christian music, you know where I'm going. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, right? If I could sing, I'd sing it to you, but I can't, so I won't. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, and he is holy. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for you. We thank you, God, for your holiness. We thank you not only for your holiness, but that you love us and include us in this. I ask that you remove me from me and that the words I speak be yours and yours alone. That you anoint me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. And Father, that everything is done in this church just glorifies you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So if you've brought your Bibles, and I've got them up on the screen as well, but we're going to be reading out of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6, and when I read along in the scriptures, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation, just so you know. But Isaiah does something a little different. He talks about King Uzziah. We're going to talk about that in just a minute and why it's relative, uh, relevant that he mentions King Uzziah. But, but let me give you the homework as you're turning there. King Uzziah was one of the top five kings in all of Israel. He was actually the third king in a row that started out good, but ended up bad. Now, if you've ever read 1st or 2nd Kings or 1st and 2nd Chronicles, you know the sin cycle that took place. A king would do really great, and he would just dive out. We would do great, and then he would dive out. He was the third one in a row to do this. He led the Israelites to one of the greatest spiritual revolutions, one of the last ones, Uzziah had great intentions, but no follow-through, if you will. See, he got this word that I like to use sometimes called haughty. H-A-U-G-H-T-Y, haughty. Not haughty like on Instagram, right? Haughty, it means to be better than, to think you're better than someone else. Now, as a Christian, not only as a pastor, but as a Christian, that drives me nuts. It doesn't matter how much money we have in our banks. It doesn't matter what kind of car we drive, where we live. These things don't matter. It only matters that we love God and we know that God created everyone, right? Created all of us. But what he did, his haughtiness, okay? Not his Instagram pose, but his haughtiness. He thought he was doing so good that he grabbed the incense and he was swinging it through. He was offering his incense in the Holy of Holies. He, he was in the temple 
Well, we know that that was a job for the Levites. So God struck him with leprosy and he had it for the rest of his life. Was his intentions good? No, because God wouldn't have struck him with leprosy had they would be, right? God knows our hearts. He knows us from the inside out, does he not? He knows the glances that we give to someone else. He knows the words we say in our cars as we leave work, church, wherever. He knows everything we say, everything we do. God knows these things. But God did something amazing with Isaiah. And not only with Isaiah, he did it with Paul. He did it with John. He opened the curtains of heaven and gave them a glimpse into the throne room of heaven. That in and of itself should blow us away at the amazingness of God. And I've often said, if God would just open the curtains of heaven, I believe we all would live a better life. I believe, number one, we would look back and think, you know what, when I die, I'm going there, right? When, when I die, and, and, and I believe if you've seen the throne room of heaven, you wouldn't worry too much about taking your last breath here on earth. You'd be ready to go. Secondly, I believe the holiness, the awesomeness that surrounds God would also make us walk a little better, right? Make us talk a little better. Maybe may even make us serve the Lord a little more. God's holiness, he is holy for a reason. God is love, and don't get me wrong, God is love, and we're going to talk about that. And he loves us so much, he gave us his son Jesus. But God is also holy, and he demands holiness from those that are him. Let me ask you a question as I preach today. Are you giving God your very best? Are you serving God with your very best? Are you giving him your first fruits or do you sweep off your scraps and give it to God? Think about that. Every single one of us can think about that and reflect in our own life. Are we giving God our very best, not just at church? Are you giving God your very best at work? Are you giving God your very best in the store? Are you giving God your very best everywhere you go? He is holy and demands the best, yet loves us enough to accept our scraps. But that's not what he wants. Think about this for just a second. Isaiah chapter 6 in verse 1 says this, It was in the year King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. So we know during the time, this is Isaiah saying, this is what I saw. He was sitting on a lofty throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Attending him were mighty seraphim, each having six wings. Two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. They were calling out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Their voices shook the temple to its foundations and the entire building was filled with smoke. Stop right there. How many of you here have been through an earthquake? I grew up in California, so a few of us have, right? I tell you what, nothing will get your, uh, your attention quicker than the earth starts shaking, okay? And let me tell you some. I read this and I think about it and I remember being in an earthquake, especially as a kid. It gets your attention and it gets it fast. So, so when you're imagining this, and I got a picture to show here in just a second. Imagine this going on. Just the, the voices of the seraphim filled the room with smoke and shook the building to its foundations in the awe of God's holiness. Then I said, it's all over, I'm doomed, for I am sinful man. I have filthy lips, and I live among a people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord of heaven's army. Stop right there. Anytime you see Lord, capital L, that is indignative of Yahweh. Yahweh, which means God, right? Yahweh, which means God. So little note there, if you're following in your Bible, circle it. Big L, Lord, is Yahweh. Number six, then one, verse six, excuse me. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with it and said, see, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. What an amazing scene. Show the picture, if you will. Again, we have finite minds trying to understand an infinite God. The light shining from God's holiness. 
the seraphim with the six wings covering their eyes, their faces, their feet, flying about. That is the holiness of who God is. Now, we don't know if Isaiah... However it was, we do know that there is one other place that describes almost this exact same scene. And we're going to turn to that here in just a minute. But today I want to look at three different things. I want to explain God's holiness. I want to see how that applies to man and woman and how it applies to the Christian. How does God's holiness apply to you and I? It applies to everyone. Keep that in mind. It applies to every single person, whether you are saved or not. It applies to man and woman, and it definitely applies to us as Christians. So let's explain God's holiness. And again, understand, who am I to explain God's holiness, right? I have my moments. Now, I know you can't believe that because I'm just sweet buddy Dockham Jr., right? And I've got my moments. I've got times where I'm sure she's like, get away. <laughs> we all do though, do we not? But here's the deal. God sees us. He sees us in those moments. He sees us when we're great. He sees us when we're eh, mediocre. God knows us yet loves us anyways. And he is holy. We see a lofty throne with his robe that filled the room. We see seraphim that cries out, holy, holy, holy that shakes the foundations, fills the temple with smoke. So, so you, we've got to understand some things. That you're, you're probably thinking, okay, yeah, I don't get it, whatever. I see the picture, all right. But you see, there's meaning behind these things. Let's talk about that. The throne, if you've ever watched a movie with a king or a queen, they sit on what? A throne. Now, the bigger the pomp and circumstance, the bigger the throne, Right? Some of them are very ornate. Some of them are jeweled. Some of them are made of all kinds of things. If you've ever watched the uh, oh, HBO series, uh, I forget what it's called now. Help me out. Thank you, the Game of Thrones, right? It, it's seven different kingdoms, and every single king has a different throne that they sit on. One's ornate, one's made of bones, one's made of steel, all these different ones. I'm not promoting the movie, I'm just saying, okay? But, but we got to understand the throne that, that Isaiah is in. God is worthy of the biggest throne, yet loves us enough through his holiness. Do you get that? Does it blow you away? Now, he also talks about a long train that filled the room. All right. I'm not old enough to remember that, but I've seen pictures. And her train was long as she was brought in. And it's for a reason. The longer the train, the more queen she is. I am old enough to remember Princess Diana getting married. And some of us here too. And if you aren't agreeing with me, you're lying, okay? <laughs> we're that old and it's, we're getting older. But I remember my mom waiting up until like 2 o'clock in the morning, English time or England time, whatever, and watching this huge train that came down the aisle that was attached to her. There's a reason for it. You see, back in the time, think about it, cotton wasn't available. Those were a big deal when there was a lot of material made for a queen or a king. Couldn't just go to Walmart. There was no Walmart back then, right? Maybe he remarked, I don't know, you know, just saying. But what the kings would do is they would conquer a city. They would actually cut the train of the robe off of the king that they, cap that they captured and conquered. They would attach it to their own. See, that signified power. It signified authority. It signified that, you know what, look how long my train of the robe is. So do you get the imagery that Isaiah is trying to show us here? The imagery is that God is all authoritative. God, his train fills the room. There is no one more authoritative than our God that we serve. The throne that he sits on gives him the pomp and circumstance that is worthy of a king. And God is so holy. This, this phrase that we hear, holy, 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 should just marvel us. 
And I've marveled all week, and I've felt so unqualified, so um, to even talk about God's holiness. So I did some digging, and I did some, uh, some searching on what this phrase means. It's only explained one other time in the Bible, Revelation chapter 4 and verse 8, and we're going to talk about that. Commentators believe the, 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 uh, the wording of holy, holy, holy is also uh, significant of the Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, all three perfect together. Another thought is holy, holy, holy put together is like saying holy, holy, holier, holiest. There is no one holier than our God that we serve. Amen? There is no one more authoritative. There is no one that deserves more pomp and circumstance than the God that we serve because he is perfect. He is powerful. He has everything. Think of the sun. We cannot today, as a beautiful sunny day in our naked eyes, go out and look at the sun. We cannot stand the power that comes from the sun. It would blind us. But we need that sun that gives us warmth, right? We need that sun to help us get through this life. We can't touch the sun and live. But yet the sun helps us to get through our days. God is the same way. God and his holiness is the same way. We can't look at God directly. We cannot touch him and live. Think back to your Bible turning days when you read about Moses. Moses was a man who talked with God. Literally had conversations with him, verbal conversations. Moses was so close to God that he said, you know what, I'd like to see you. God said, you can't handle it. The Bible tells us he put him in the cleft of a rock and covered his face until he walked by and God allowed Moses to look at God's backside. Now, now, now what happened when he come down from that mountain? Just by looking at the backside of God walking past him, his face was glowing and it freaked his people out, right? They're like, get away from me. So he had to put a veil on. Just the backside of God and his holiness illuminated Moses' face. You think about that. We are going to spend eternity with that God, that holiness forever and ever and ever. But we still don't get it, do we? I don't get it after studying all week long. I'm trying my best. But these are the things I want us all to think about this week. Let's look at Revelation 4, 8. It's almost... John, Isaiah, and Paul seen the throne room of God, but John seen exactly what Isaiah says. Each of these living beings had six wings, and their wings with, were covered all over with eyes, inside and out. That's a little more insight than what Isaiah gives us, isn't it? Day after day and night after night, they kept on saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, the one who always was, who is, and who's still to come. How does that make you feel? How does it make, it make you feel that you get to serve a God that is worthy of this? We are... ...into his family. It should also reassure us it means God is powerful and over everything. What are you going through today that you don't think you can get through? What circumstance or situation do you think you can't face, yet you serve a God that is this powerful, this holy? There is nothing we can face. There is nothing that we can go through that we should not know that God is in control. So stop stressing. Stop freaking out. Give it to God and let go, right? We hear these little cliche Christianese sayings and we say them, but do we mean them? We can do that. We can have freedom in God. Number two, it means that God is perfect and without fault. Rest assured in knowing that. Rest assured that knowing that God is perfect. And not only that, my last point is this. It means God's going to set everything straight, right? If God is in control of our lives as Christians, let me say this. If we give God our lives and we let him control them, what do we have to worry about? The most dangerous prayer you can pray is, God, use me. Because he will, if you make yourself available. I've asked God, and I've told God, and Kirstie and I have talked about this, and we've agreed. 
God, I'll say what you want me to say. I'll do what you want me to do and I'll do it wherever it is. He's taken me to places. He's had me say things that I never thought I could say. I'm serving him in a way that I never thought I would serve him. God is amazing. And can I tell you something? I'm nothing special. There is nothing special about me. If you will say those same things, if you will pray that same prayer, he will do those same things to you. But you've got to be available. That is the God that we serve. The holy God that we serve wants us to serve him. See, we're not here just to take up space and suck oxygen. We realize that, right? We are here for a purpose. We are here to glorify God. But we don't live in a world that wants us to do that, do we? We live in crazy times right now. We live in a world that's all about us. We show the world our, only our best, don't we? That's the world we live in. You have to look at everything that we read and see and add this to the end of it. A girl we went to school with, I seen it today on Facebook and I loved it. I thought it was so great. And God is still on the throne. They may be rioting, but God is still on the throne. We may be in a civil war or whatever we're going through, but God is still on the throne. Do you see how that works? God is still sovereign. Remember, it's got to get worse before Jesus can come back. Amen? Now, I am no prophet of, the, of, of end times, but I'll say this. I believe it's getting shorter and shorter and shorter to when God is going to send his son to come pick us up. What, what are you doing to make the world a better place? What are you doing to bring others with you? We all have a purpose. We are here to glorify God not just take up space and suck oxygen. Remember, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Number two, God's holiness in man, men and women. I'm not talking about Christians. I'm talking about people in general. Look at verse five. In verse five, then I said, it's all over. I'm doomed for I'm a sinful man. I have filthy lips and I live among a people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the king, the Lord of heaven's armies. He recognized his sin. He recognized that there was nothing good about him. Even on his best behavior, even on his best day, he's unworthy. You realize as carnal human beings, when we're born, we're born into sin. One thing I hate is someone that thinks they're better than another drives me nuts. Because we're not better than another. If we're not better than, we're equal to. God wants us to know that. Years ago, when Christy and I bought our first home, I planted this apple tree, and I was very excited about it. I planted this tree from a little pot, and it grew and grew, and I had one little year of a few apples that showed up on this tree. And I'll never forget the first apple I picked had a big hole in it. And, and this apple that had a hole, I'm thinking, man, a worm or something crawled their way in. Do you realize that apple, what, that's not how apples get worms. You see, when it blossoms, when there's the, it's just a blossom on the branch, a fly or something lands on it, puts an egg and then that apple forms over that egg, and then that worm opens up in that apple and eats his way from the inside out. We have to realize sin is much the same way. Sin is exactly the same way. It, it happens from the inside out. God knows what we say. He knows what we think. There's no such thing as a good person. I made a post here the other day couple weeks ago on Facebook, and I don't do it very often, you know. I, I, I mean, sometimes I feel led to when, when, when I'm like in the midst of my preparing, and, and, and God is just like, I feel him, you know, and, and, and I'm like, all right, God, I'm going to go for it, and I'm going to put some out there, because it's not about me. It's about God. It's about what God does, and I felt so unqualified, so unworthy to prepare this sermon, because I am unworthy. I am unqualified to speak for the Lord, and so are you. 
However, through the shed blood of Jesus, we can say these things. Through the shed blood of Jesus, we can do these things for him. He, he doesn't just leave us there. You see, that's what God says. He, he doesn't just tell us, you're bad, you're bad, you're bad. He gives us a way to be reconciled to him. He doesn't just continually say, you're no good, you're no good, you're no good. He gave us a way to be accepted into his family. But are we taking advantage of that? Now, I believe if you're sitting here, prayerfully, you are. Prayerfully, you've made that decision to follow Christ. But what about the umpteen jillion, I made that up, people in this world that don't know Christ as Savior, that have not made that decision? We all sit around and say, oh yeah, I want everybody to go with us, but are we making a difference? Do, 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 are you telling others that, you know what, there's no difference between us? I, I'm going to build that bridge with you, and then I'm going to sprinkle some Jesus on you, and then, and then I'm going to, you know, I'm going to let the Holy Spirit do the work. You, you see, we got to understand, we are no better, even as Christians, than anyone else. Because our brothers and sisters that are out there, you know what they are? They're just potential Christians. They are our future brothers and sisters in the Lord. They're our brothers and sisters anyways. Doesn't matter what color their skin is, where they go to church or anything else. They're our future brothers and sisters. And we've got to realize that. Romans 3.10 says, as the scriptures say, no one is righteous, not even one. No one is righteous, not even one. Not even sweet little Buddy Dockham Jr. in the five minutes, he does pretty good. But we don't like to hear that, do we? It's hard for us to admit that we're sinful people, is it not? Well, think about it. When, you, when something bad happens, what's the first thing you do? You start going through your list. Why me, God, right? I did this, I did this, I did this, and I did this. We do it. We're, we're natural. You ever had somebody give you criticism? Well, we don't like that, do we? Whoo, nobody does. Not even if it's to help you out. We don't like it, do we? We just want to hear the good stuff. You did a really good job today, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> we do. It's what we like. And you bet I like to hear that every once in a while. Okay, just saying. No. But, I, I mean, you, you get that? We love that. But I would appreciate, and I have several people that I talk with, and I'll ask them, what's my feedback? What, what did I say wrong? What could I have done better? And it's like, Okay, when they answer, okay. <laughs> but I love that feedback. It's good for us. It's how we grow, do we not? It's how we understand. This is what God is saying. He's just saying, you know what? Don't focus on the bad. We're all unworthy. But when you come into my family, I impute righteousness to you. I, I, I make you okay to serve me, right? That's my last point. What does God's holiness mean to the Christian? What does it mean to his brothers and sisters, right? Right? Remember, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And, and, and we see this in verse 6 and 7. Think of Isaiah. He realized how sinful he was, and then something happens. The seraphim flew to me with a burning coal. He had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with it and said, See, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed and your sins are forgiven. Now, if you read that, if you think of it, you, we might think, well, the coal is what cleansed him. But it's not. God is what cleansed Isaiah. The coal was nothing more than an instrument. The coal was nothing more than an instrument used to cleanse Isaiah. Now, we know who cleanses, cleanses, cleans us, right? It's Jesus. Amen. God gave us the best instrument ever through his son, Jesus. I love this quote, Robert McCurry McShane. In a great measure, according to the purity and perfections of the instrument, will be the success. In great measure, according to the purity and perfections of the instrument, will be the success. Can I tell you something? If, if you've ever had someone tell you you're no good, if you ever have had someone tell you you're not worthy, can I tell you something? As a imputed with God's righteousness, if we accept Christ as Savior. That's how much he loves us. Don't let anybody tell you you're not worthy. Don't let anybody tell you anything. Only through the shed blood of Jesus are we worthy because that's the way we come to know this. We sing about it as a youth and we forget about it as we grow older, do we not? Do you beat yourself up continually sometimes? I know I do. Let's just be honest. Now, I did this in the first service. I want to see some, are you ready? Participation. Oh, what does that mean? 
I'm going to sing a little song. Yes, I'm going to sing. One of these days, God's going to give me a voice to sing. It may be in heaven. And then you know the next part. I don't even have to say it. Kirsty, she'll help you. What can wash away my sins? One more time. You all are good. What can wash away my sin? First service got the work cut out. Y'all are a choir. I love it. Romans 3.22 says, We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. Doesn't matter the color of our skin. Doesn't matter where we live. Doesn't matter how much money we have. Anyone who confesses Christ as their Savior, believes in the burial, death, and resurrection of Jesus, is a brother and sister to you and I. Is the brother or sister to Jesus himself. Think about that. God's holiness says, you know what? Not only do I bring you into my family, I make you one of my own. There is no difference. It should blow us away. God is holy, yet accepts us with all of our baggage. All of our dirty laundry, if you will, right? He loves us that much. Do we realize what a gift that is? Do we understand what it is? You see, the holiness of God should just blow us away. It's amazing. And I pray you have a better understanding of what that means to you. I pray that when you leave here today, you walk away and you say, you know what, God, thank you for your holiness. Thank you for your son, Jesus, because through your son, Jesus, I'm imputed with righteousness. I'm considered good enough to serve you. I'm considered good enough to one day look upon you in that throne room, to one day join in the seraphim and sing songs. You are going to sing, whether you can sing or not here on earth, you're going to sing one day. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be very boisterous when I'm singing up there. In a good way, okay? All right, not in a haughty way, but in a, you know, in a good way. I want to sing and praise my Lord. I want to praise him for everything because the more and the, and the closer I grow with him, the more I know that everything comes from him. The air I breathe, the legs I have to walk on, the strength to go up and down stairs. You see how it all comes from him? You can always find something to thank God for. We can always find something to thank him for. But can I tell you something? Let's thank him for his holiness. It should mean so much to us. So much more than I believe what we've given him credit about. Before, prayerfully, not after. I pray that after this service, you will think, man, God, you are so holy. And I owe you so much. It's my weekly challenge. Super simple. You ready? Think and thank God for his holiness. Think and thank God for his holiness. Think about how holy he is. I'm going to challenge you one more. What are you offering God in your offering? In your daily walk, what are you offering him? Are you offering him? I'm not talking just about tithing. I'm talking about in every area of your life. Are you giving God your best? Are you giving him your first fruits? Something we all need to think about. God is love and he is holy and he demands his people to be as holy as they can as well. Not holier than. Just give him your best. He's already brought you into the family. Just give him your best. We're going to go ahead and close the service. And as we close, you know, the altars are open, of course. But I just really would like for you to, to think about who God is and what he's done. If you'll just trust in who he is and realize how holy and amazing he is. It should blow us all away. As I read this, I thought, was Isaiah able to stand or was he just down on his knees with his head covered? We don't know. The holiness of God is amazing. Take this time to reflect as we, as we sing a few verses. stand and just seek the Lord wherever you're at? Just seek Him. I 
can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see. Before me, I can only imagine. Surrounded by your glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or will all of you be still? Or to my knees will I fall, will I sing hallelujah, will I be able to speak it all, I can only imagine, I can only imagine. find myself standing in the sun I can only imagine I just want to say this I just feel led to say this if you don't know Christ as your Savior I pray you make that decision I don't know if it's somebody watching. I don't know if somebody's going to watch this, but I pray that you will make that decision to follow Jesus. You see, it's, it's not hard. We like to complicate things as human beings. We like to make them difficult. God just says, you know what? Trust in my son, Jesus. Believe that he died on the cross for your sins. Believe that three days later he was resurrected and then trust your life to him. And then you are in this family. You are considered righteous. You have that imputed to you. So I don't know who needs to hear that, but someone does. Because can I tell you something? Joining the family of God is the best thing you'll ever do. And as we close out in prayer, I just pray that wherever you are, Whatever's going on in your life, you'll make that decision if you haven't made it now. Yes, as human beings, we are not worthy, but through the holiness of God and the shed blood of Jesus, we are made holy. We are made righteous. We are made able to stand in all eternity before His throne and cry out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you. And we thank you, God, for who you are. We thank you for your holiness. We thank you for your son, Jesus. Father, I pray, Lord, that every single one of us here today and watching online or watching later, Father, that they will search themselves and ask themselves one simple question. Am I giving you my best? Am I giving a holy God what he deserves in my service? Whether it's at church, whether it's at work, whether it's at the store, whether it's driving down the road, God, am I giving you my best? That's a question we all need to ask ourselves. That's a question we all need to consider as we stand before the Lord. Father, I ask, Lord, that you be with each and every person here today. Whatever we're going through, God, whether it's a circumstance or a situation, Father, I pray, Lord, that you just bless them. In faith, I know you're going to give them exactly what they need. But bring them that peace. Bring them that comfort to know and understand that you are sovereign and in control, that your holiness is amazing. Father, in faith, we're going to thank you for your answers, whatever they are. We're going to thank you for our amazing day. And lastly, most importantly, we thank you for your holiness and your son, Jesus. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you all for joining today. Go out and enjoy it. It's sunny. It's beautiful. High up like what? 82, <laughs> whatever it is, just thank God in it. Go with God and have a blessed day.
It me. I can tell you that. I don't play pick with this. We're going to start with What a Glorious Night.
Two. Ready? <laughs>